morning, brothers and sisters. Let's begin um, our walk through Scripture this morning and just reading together from uh, the daily readings for this day on the Christian calendar, uh, which to the best of my understanding ought to be uh, June 12, 2020. But if I'm wrong, correct me. June 11th, 2020. Good job correcting me there. Hallelujah. Psalm 112. Hallelujah. Happy are those who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. And the generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. Let me say that again. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. If you want to make a hypothetical guess, two people walking down the street, one is uh, merciful and full of compassion, the other is harsh and full of judgment. Which do you suppose is the righteous? The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. After about the fourth time reading this, it struck me just now. It's not just they are generous. It's not that they manage their affairs with justice. This is true. But for them, this is a reward in itself. It is good for them to be generous. It is good for them to manage to manage their affairs with justice. Verse 6, for they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. Now, this is not a sermon, so it's not necessarily organized around one theme. It's not a Bible study, so I'm not trying to catch everything. It's a time of reflection. So I'm going to stop and reflect on this. I want to be timely about this. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. The psalmist knew this and, and formed it into a one of those three-way prayers where somebody's listening and praying along and we're praying to God, but we're also praying about God and we're also reflecting on our own understanding of who God is and who we are. And would you suppose that we're living in a day of rumors? And... Many people prefer rumors than to solid truth. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I pray that because I want to get it right, or as right as I can. Given that it's a reflection, rumors everywhere. Jesus said there'd be wars and rumors of wars, right? Rumors of pandemic, rumors of conspiracy behind the pandemic, rumors of conspiracy to cover up the pandemic, rumors of conspiracy to inflate the the severity of the pandemic, rumors of when people speak their minds, somebody else is behind them pulling strings, rumors of this, rumors of that, rumors of loss of our freedom, rumors of loss of our ability to to live. Rumors, 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 rumors. And where do rumors lead? Bad thinking, bad choices. 
choices that are not made on the facts, choices are not, that are not made on the revelation of God in Scripture, choices that are not made on principle, and choices that are primarily made from the knee-jerk reaction of fear. And the psalmist says, the righteous person who's full of compassion and generosity They, uh, they're not afraid of evil rumors. They can tell the truth. They can look at a situation and assess it and say, you know, bad news today. And I, and I sense that things are not getting better and that the world is in, in a mess and that not all our history is rosy and we haven't always operated from the right motives. And, and 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 but i'm not afraid no instead of fear they make a choice put their trust in the lord and therefore their heart is established it shall not shrink consider the possibility that there might be a difference between a hardened calcified mind and an established heart They shall see their desire upon their enemies. They have freely given to the poor. Their righteousness stands forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. And the desires of the wicked will perish. Well, what's the problem here? What's getting the uh, wicked all riled up? about what the, they see in the righteous life and the blessedness of a righteous, upright life. Oh, they're, they're ticked off at the serenity of it all. They're ticked off at the confidence of it all. They're ticked off at the joy of it all. They are ticked off at your generosity. They are ticked off at your compassion. And they don't get their desire. Why is it you get your desire, they don't get theirs? Well, look at the desire. Because of the nature of, of who you are as among the righteous, and I don't mean you, that you've arrived, I just mean you're leaning in that direction. and you're, Or maybe you're staggering in that direction. Or maybe you are two steps forward and one, one step backward in that direction, but you are trending in that direction and because of that your desire by definition here is even for the good of your enemy it's for the good of uh, of all God's people it's for the good of the kingdom of God The desire of the wicked is only for harm for others, and it will not succeed. Take a trip with me over to Isaiah 45. I mean, forgive me, Isaiah 42, 5 through 12. By the way, I've been telling you the wrong room number. The view from 524 looks like it's 5234 or something like that. I, I just look for my, um, my stuff on the bed when I walk by and... If it's the right place, I go in. Haven't ended up in the wrong bed yet. Keep your fingers crossed. Thus says the Lord, Isaiah 42, 5 through 12. Thus says the Lord, who created the heavens and spread them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you righteous. Who's the righteous person? Well, bottom line, the one that God calls righteous. I have taken you by the hand. I have
given you as a covenant to the people. Uh, look at look at all those things he did right there for you and in you and to you and for you and about you. I have um, called you righteous. I have taken you by the hand. I've kept you. Pinch yourself. You're here, aren't you? Still here. I pinched myself this morning. Somebody standing by my, by my bed about 3.30 this morning. Give me some meds. Check my vitals. You know what? Stuff you do in the hospital. I made a decision. Am I going to wake up for a little while or go back to sleep? I, oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much. I've had a little more than three, three and a half and a little less than four hours of solid sleep. We got my CPAP machine going. Um, I don't know if I look any better, but I, I feel like I smell better. And uh, you kept me, oh God. All that to say you've kept me. Taken us by the hand, kept us, called us. And given us, given us, back to the world as a covenant to the people. Now I understand the context here. He's talking about the Israel of Isaiah's day. He's talking about being a lighthouse nation. He's talking about being a signal on the hill, a lighthouse by the shore, a demonstration plot of what God can do. But we have some kind of broad base permission to go to the core of that and realize there's one God and one people and, and one great calling, and that calling is yeah, to be light, to be a sign of God's covenant, God's grace, God's call to righteousness. And here's what it means. A covenant to the people. A light to the nations. To open the eyes that are blind. To bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in the darkness. This is all messianic stuff. That was a messianic kind of psalm. So messianic, uh, wonderful, wonderful word from Isaiah. And we're going to see the messianic movement spread in Jesus from where he's doing all the teaching to where he calls his disciples to him so that he can send them out in the next phase. And then there's another phase and another phase. And then part of your readings today are from Acts and Antioch, where there's yet another phase where you have a home-based church that is multi-ethnic and multi-generational and multi-linguistic and multi-racial and multi-ideological in some ways in terms of the backgrounds that people have come from and multi-experiential. And he says, now go out and let this good news be heard everywhere. Prisoners go free. Where there's darkness, there's light. Be a light to the nations. What's your sphere of influence today? What kind of darkness are you set in, set upon, or set in the midst of today? I'm not saying go look for the darkness. I'm saying be aware of the darkness. Because you are called and given and sent and set and to be a light to that darkness. Today, I continue. I am the Lord. All caps. I am Adonai. I am the one. I am the name. That is my name, my glory. I give it to no other, nor praise to idols. 
then God's not going to let us invest our lives in fake things. Things that are not right, upright, righteous. He's not going to let us lose ourselves in the fakery of false idols, false gods. He's always calling us to truth and center and what's real and what's abiding. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare, they shall spring forth. I tell you of them, sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the end of the earth. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the coastlands and their inhabitants. Let the desert and its towns lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar inhabits. Let the inhabitants of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the tops of the mountains. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. Talk about smiles for this morning. Some glory for this morning. And then we wander over. And it may seem like meandering, but it's not a meandering. Uh, through the centuries to Matthew 10, 7 through 16. And Jesus has been doing the teaching. He's been calling people to himself to come and to follow him. And he's broadening the circle now. A specific time, specific mission to a specific people. Sometimes our missions are way too uh, specific, but most of the time they're way too general. You say, oh, what are you doing right now? We don't want to just say I'm putting this box together, but uh, maybe to say that you are Doing something much bigger than that would narrow your focus around from what you need to be doing in order to do, be doing the big thing. As you go, proclaim the good news, the evangelion of God, the good news, the gospel, all the same thing. And then he, he defines it. This is the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. What is that eschatological tone and the overtones and the undertones of everything that we've just read in Psalm 112 and, and Isaiah? Except this, good news of the kingdom. It's eschatological. It's messianic. It is world-altering, life-changing call to the whole world to sit upright. I had a physical therapy uh, session yesterday, and the young lady, one of the most cheerful and delightful and brilliant, and just one year out of physical therapy school, presumably Dr. Phil physical therapy, which is what they give now. And she said, you know, Stand upright. Strengthen the core. Sit upright. Strengthen the core. This is the core of it. This is the core of it. The good news. That God rules. Good news. That someone who can express God's rule in bodily form, Jesus the Christ has come and is calling and is making a path for us through the silence and the cacophony noise of the issues of our day, racism, God has arrived. God has arrived. When God arrives, we can stop hiding behind, oh, we can't talk about that, or we can't do anything about that. All possibilities are on the table. When God arrives, when the kingdom of God is near, as you go, proclaim good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Everything 
is possible. Nothing is impossible. He continues, cure the sick. Thank you, God. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Cast out demons. You have received without payment. Give without payment. He says, you know, then make sure as you go, you depend upon the generosity of strangers. And if they don't give it, so what? Your, your feet were uh, dusty when you came. They can be dusty when you leave. Just... And there's no assumption that we won't be back another day. Circle down, spin down through the times just a little bit more. and Go into a, a few years into the church. Acts 11. All this rightness, rightness, all this uprightness, this strengthening of the core, all this righteousness, this good news of righteousness, of God's righteous coming in Christ, of God's redemption, of God's love, spoken out, lived out, acted out, given freely, even as it's been freely received. And persecution has come upon the church. Sorry about my finger. I just don't want my phone to go off. Stephen has been stoned to death. Church has been scattered. The word of the Lord has moved to Cyprus, Cyrene, to the Hellenists, and a city called Antioch. And some, something starts to buzz in Antioch. Things start to buzz in specific certain places, don't they? In our world today, even. Buzzes start, and then buzzes spread. And this particular buzz got to Jerusalem. Jerusalem uh, had always been both the theological and the missional center of the church, and now it will continue to be the theological center of the church, but a new uh, location is emerging, a new strategic outpost is emerging as the missional center of first century discipleship in Jesus. That's Antioch. And the word about what's happening in Antioch spreads to Jerusalem, and so they send Barnabas to Antioch and he, he when he arrives there he's overwhelmed with the visual demonstration of the grace of God and he rejoiced and exhorted them all to be to, to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion um, this is the feast day of St. Barnabas in Catholic Church and some other churches but probably the Anglican Church I'm not sure probably the Orthodox Church, but, you know, any day is a good day for a, a good feast, and any day is a good day for Barnabas, the encourager. Son of encouragement is his name. By the way, since the age of 50, when I sought God for a reformulation, redefinition, and rearticulation of my life's mission, all that really came up was encouragement. Encourage other people to become all that they can be in Christ. Because it was a time for me breaking records was well past, and it was it, it, it became apparent I wasn't going to be a record breaker, but you could be, and you can be, and you will be, and you are. And Barnabas was just the right man. And Barnabas gets this ding of an idea. Bing! Great things going on. I think I'll go get Saul of Tarsus. Bring him back here, and we'll work together here. And so we brought him all the way back to Antioch, and they spent a year there in Antioch doing what? Well, they were encouraging the church, teaching, learning together, growing together, becoming family together, suffering persecution together, and for a very first time, probably as a derisive term, as a term of derision, as a 
as a tease from the people on the streets. They started to be called uh, baby, baby Jesuses, baby Christ, baby Messiahs, the Messianic movement continuing. The, the movement of encouragement, the movement of the kingdom of God, the movement that says God has arrived and God is doing something new and wonderful and big and out of this world. And it involves setting things aright, strengthening the core, making people righteous, creating a community of generosity and a community of compassion in a world of darkness. They found him, brought him back, and in that moment they started to call him Christians. And one of the prophets stood up and said, there's going to be a really big famine, and the whole world as we know it is going to be hit hard. And Jerusalem is going to be hit hard. And they didn't fear it. They didn't take it as a conspiracy theory. There was not denial and there was not resignation. Two opposite ends of the same distortion. Rather, they did what people who are starting to be called Christians do. They began to pray. They began to say, where is God in this? And where does God want me to be in this? As we, he wants us to be stuck in room 524 or 5324 or 5234 or whatever it happens to be. Doing what you can while you can, with what you can, among whom you can. Oh, well, they got a bigger vision. They said, we, let's start, those of us who can right now, doing uh, an old Joseph thing. But let's do it for them, not for us. Let's start collecting as much as we can to help and help those folks in Jerusalem who've given us so much. So they set aside Paul and Barnabas for that work to which they had been called. Very specific work again. And they laid hands on them. And they sent them forth. And this is the word of God for Thursday. I said... I want to say May, then I want to say December, then I want to say January. And God knows that on the human calendar today, which is fleeting, is June 11th, 2020. This is the Word of God with some of my embellishments and your room for reflecting. Thanks be to God. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here's a time in the prayer time when in my congregations as we were meeting together and more so as adults, I would say, I'm going to just come to this time of prayer. We're all praying together. We're all united in the spirit. And would you verbally out loud, best of your ability right now, call out the names of those that you wish to be included in the Lord's prayer, included in your prayer, including in that prayer that is within your soul that the Spirit is praying deep inside you in your spirit that with groanings that cannot be uttered, prayer for healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the leper, bringing good news to the poor. Right now, call out names as they pop. Yes. Yes. Back there in Virginia, down there in Alabama. Over there in Alaska, 
up there in Fresno where my little flock is. Yes. John, Henry, April, May, June, <laughs> Sally. Penny, Bo, Spike, Mahilda, Elmo, Igman G. Goodfellow the Third, sick, bereaved, wandering, wandering, lost, carried away by rumors and stirred by idols. God, hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Lend thine ear to our prayer. This morning we pray. Every word you say will sink so deeply in our souls and bring us from the dead and bring us fully to life and establish your truth among us. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. See you tomorrow, beloved.